On the 14th of May, 2013, Mason and Borowski Group, Claymont Group, and the National Housing Authority signed a joint venture agreement forming the NHA-NBC joint venture. The project is a joint venture arrangement, firstly with two Australian companies, Mason and Borowski, who are the project development financier of the project, and Claremont um, Group, who are the uh, development uh, company that is responsible for a number of project development in Australia. So the two have formed a joint venture which is called the NBC Joint Venture and that joint venture is going to be a joint venture with the National Housing Authority forming the National Housing NBC Joint Venture. And the intent of this project obviously is for these parties to get together and to be able to undertake this building of 500,000 houses over a period of 10 years. The purpose of this project is to make housing affordable to the majority of people living in Zambia as well as allowing government to supply vital infrastructure facilities such as electricity, safe drinking water, and wastewater management systems. The increase in adequate housing stocks, safe water provisions, and sanitation facilities will greatly reduce the pressures on the Zambian health system and local government. Zambia is a landlocked country in southern Africa. The capital city is Lusaka, located in the south central part of the country. The population is concentrated mainly around Lusaka in the south and the Copperbelt province in the northwest. Zambia's population is approximately 14 million with an average growth rate of 3.2% per annum over the last decade. In the last 30 years, Zambia has experienced substantial urban migration as people search for work. This has caused a chronic housing shortage, especially in the urban areas. The lack of supply and high demand for housing have increased the cost of housing beyond the affordability for most of the population. As a result, many Zambians are forced to live in unplanned developments with inadequate safe drinking water and sanitation facilities. Furthermore, in 1996, the government, under the direction of then-President Chiluba, decided to sell most of the public housing stocks to sitting tenants. The revenue generated through renting the public housing stock had been a vital income stream for the local governments. Local governments use this revenue to build new stock and maintain the public infrastructure, including water and sanitation. Once the stock was sold, local governments lost their main source of income to provide essential services. This problem largely contributed to the decline in new housing stocks and the development of unplanned settlements. Most of the major cities and towns in Zambia are surrounded by unplanned settlements a large proportion of the urban population resides in these informal settlements. Lusaka, the largest city in Zambia, has 70% of its population living in unplanned settlements. By 2002, the city of Lusaka had 37 unplanned settlements. In 2000, the population of Kitwe, the second largest city in Zambia, was 388,642, and 40% of this population was living in 28 unplanned settlements located on the fringes of statutory areas. Many of these unplanned settlements are built with scrap, mud, and wood products. Unplanned settlements are considered to be illegal residential areas. As a result, the local authorities are not obliged to provide them with socio-economic facilities and services as they would in statutory residential areas. There are many, many. First of all, it's disease. Um, and, and remember that we're talking about 60 or 70 percent of Lusaka's population and if you project it to the national population it gets even worse. So when you say disease you're talking about 60 percent of Lusaka's population falling prey to cholera, falling prey to dysentery and other waterborne diseases and you know it, it's just some of those adverse effects may not even be quantified in terms of disease or anything else but just bad smells all over. In, in these unplanned settlements and, and having um, an area which is just so unsanitary and uh, poor for, for children to live and play in. Information from the Central Statistical Office indicates that there was a dismal performance in the growth of the total housing stock from 1.5 million in 1991 to only 2.3 million in the year 2001. Out of these houses, about 80% of them could be classified as informal in nature with poor services provided or none at all. Informal housing units include squatter as well as traditional housing structures. The number of formal houses relative to the population represents an average of 5.2 persons per house 
in 1990 and 7.6 persons per house in 2010. According to the Zambia Human Development Report in 2011, there has been a trend of low public investment in water and sanitation development since 1980. The National Health Strategic Plan recognizes poor environmental sanitation as a major source of public health problems. Local councils and governments have been mandated the role of delivering these services by the National Water Supply and Sanitation Council. However, since 1991, there has been inadequate public investment in safe water developments and sanitation facilities. As previously discussed, local governments have had little or no revenue post-1996. Well, well, some of the current factors affecting sanitation is, is first of all the poor quality of housing. Um, for Lusaka, I will tell you that uh, probably around 60% of Lusaka's population live in informal settlements. That's around Lusaka, I think in the 33 or 34 informal areas that surround Lusaka. Um, government, I know, has been trying to do their best in terms of providing good housing and sanitation uh, together. But of course, I mean, the government's capacity has been outstripped uh, by the population that is living in Lusaka and that continues to come to Lusaka. So, because government is not able to provide, first of all, adequate land for people to settle on with services on that land, it creates a very complicated situation. The population for Lusaka has grown from uh, the last census in 2010. If you compare to the previous one that was done, Lusaka's population is now higher than that of the Copper Belt combined. Mm -hmm. It's much higher. But the population for Lusaka is not growing in the formal areas. It's growing in the informal areas. So it compounds the situation of, of, of poor housing and sanitation and creates a huge, huge problem for, for disease. The purpose of this project is to slow down the development of unplanned settlements by providing affordable housing with access to clean essential services, and to build the required rental stock for local governments to have sustainable revenue that will allow them to continue building new stock and redevelop the unplanned settlements. The agreement with the National Housing Authority is for 500,000 houses over 10 years. In order to make housing affordable and accessible, the project has three distinct models. So fundamentally what this project is doing is creating affordability. So first of all, creating affordability for people that do not have access to finance and can't be in a position either to put money together to buy a house. So what it does is it creates an option for them to just be able to rent a house. And this house is decent because it's got water, it's got wastewater management, it's got access to good roads uh, to get your house. The second model that we've got in the project is a rent to buy model. Fundamentally, you get the house, you rent it over a period of time, and you pay the, the money over that period of time, allowing you over that period of time to actually end up owning the house. The third model, obviously, is for people that have access to finance and they can get that money through the banks. So, in essence, what this project is doing is creating affordability across the board. Uh, one to rent, to rent to buy, and to purchase a house. This project proposes an integrated housing development that allows government to tackle water and wastewater management systems, electricity, and road access. The integration of these facilities is essential in dealing with the critical contributors to low life expectancy in Zambia. Construction of 500,000 homes will make a significant impact on the housing supply in Zambia. A third of the new housing stock will be allocated for sale, while two thirds will be allocated to the local government as rental stock. This will allow low-income earners that cannot afford to buy a house to be able to have access to rent one. This will also provide an incentive for people living in unplanned settlements to migrate to the new housing developments. The increased revenue generated by the new rental properties will support the local governments and councils in developing future housing stocks. From the research provided by the National Housing Authority, an average one-bedroom house is priced at $60,000 making it impossible for most Zambians to afford. This poses a real challenge for any investment in affordable housing. Savings and subsidies must be achieved to improve the affordability of housing for most Zambians. The proposed selling price for a house in Zambia should be under $40,000, so as to improve the affordability for Zambians. However, the total development cost per house 
exceeds the proposed selling price by over $20,000 per house. Furthermore, Zambia lacks an adequate financing structure for housing loans. Interest rates are extremely high, making it almost impossible to make repayments. According to the World Bank report in 2011, the lending interest rates in Zambia were 21% in 2010, 22% in 2009, and 19% in 2008. These are lending interest rates charged by banks on loans to prime customers. These types of rates make it impossible for Zambians to be able to afford a house. In order to address the need for affordable housing in Zambia, four critical elements are required. These are, number one, to make housing affordable with essential services. Number two, to create access to a financing structure with affordable interest rates below 10%. The project will be financed by going through a low interest rate institution. This will allow many Zambians to be able to buy the houses at very low interest rates, substantially below current commercial rates in Zambia. Number three, to provide sustainable revenue for the local governments to be able to continue to increase housing stock and to be able to service existing stock. And lastly, to provide a return on investment. During the construction phase, this project will provide approximately 100,000 job opportunities and over 50,000 other jobs during the operational period. This project will potentially inject $650 million annually into the economy and address the lack of affordable housing and will allow the government to solve the problems of water, power, and waste management in Zambia. The project will also support other industries, such as mining, agriculture, fabrication, construction, and more. We're very excited about this project because we know it's going to bring lots of benefits to many Zambians. It'll create lots of job opportunities. It'll have a huge impact on the economy. It will help bring Zambia's GDP multiply effect, broaden the, the base, allow more people to access homes, improve the sanitary conditions, allow the government to have better infrastructure to service the people of Zambia. So it's a great project that we're all excited about and we look forward to it.